your host. I'm so excited to be here because, well, as you know, we've got amazing guests who are showing up on the show to talk about ways to ignite humanity. And why are we doing that? Well, now or never, each and every one of us has to take the responsibility to think about what can I do to help humanity? What can you do? What can each and every one of us do? Because we need to be making a difference on the planet. I've got kids, you may have kids, and we have to think about the children of the future. How do we make a better place for them? How do we inspire humanity? How do we uplift and create a better consciousness for all of us so humanity is moving in a direction that is going to last for decades, centuries, all to come? We never are giving up on humanity, and the reason why is because we're coming together and doing something that brings our heart and souls to connect with one another. And that's through those powerful Ignite moments. I believe the way to ignite humanity is through our stories, our authentic storytelling, because we connect with each other on a deeper, more intrinsic level. When we tell our Ignite moments, we connect with others in such a powerful way, we want to ignite ourselves. Now, when we ignite our lives, we ignite somebody else. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to ignite humanity. And we encourage you to do that in your lives. All right, well, we're going to have some fun on the show. And just want to remind you, if you want to see what we're up to, go to ignitehumanity.life. Check us out on our website. And we'll tell you all the things we're up to with our documentary, our docuseries, and our book. And you can also check out ignitehumanity.life backslash watch where you can see this episode and all the episodes that we love to show. All right, well, let's get on into it. We have an amazing guest. I, Benjamin, he is an award-winning filmmaker and the host of the God Element podcast. Welcome to the show. Wow. <laughs> How do you do it? And it's amazing just to see your passion for humanity. Thank you for inviting me. Well, I love it. Thank you for saying that. I mean, there's been, I think for many of us, we come to a point in our lives where we decide and want to do something different. We want to make an impact. We want to do something that goes beyond ourselves. And I think a lot of us get to a place where we're successful like yourself. And we realize that we need to use our talents to benefit others. And so tell us about you, award-winning filmmaker. I'm, I'm sure that's igniting humanity in many ways. It's, it is. It's absolutely okay. It's, and you know, the truth of the matter is to ignite humanity is why we're all here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we need to recognize it, right, guys? You know, and we're all created in God's image, right? So we're all created with a passion within us. And I believe strongly that the image that we carry is the ability to influence and impact other men, other people to their greater self. Mm -hmm. That. The thing that still those things away is our own desire to get full, to pay the bills, to pass the and that still away that passion that we have to see other people thrive. And because of that, then we begin to now host for money and house for other things, and we forget the late reason why we're here, which is to need part that is the ecosystem of humanity. Um, what's my story? So I, I moved to the United States. I was born in Africa. Mm -hmm. Love Africa. I get to go. I know. I know. It's on my way. I've got to go. I know. I know. I, know. I was born in Nigeria. I spent most of my early life in South Africa. Went to school there, studied sound engineering. But I moved to the United States about 20, 20 years ago. Wow. So I've been living in San Francisco Bay Area. Recently moved to Reading. And when I came to the United States, I had absolutely nothing in my pocket. I have, I have about $150. And I went from that experience to a little life. I understood what the American dream is meant. And I go for it. Well, what was that? I mean, you could have come here and felt like you only had $150. You could have felt like you didn't have a way, you didn't have a guide, you didn't have it easy. You didn't, there's a lot of things that you didn't have, and yet you decided? Passion for greatness. You know, it, I always talk about these three stages of our lives, right? So the first stage is where we're trying to discover who we are. Who am I? Who am I got to be? What can I have? What can I create? What can I become? What can I hustle for? And then you start from your parents' home and you go to school, you learn, you try to impress your parents. And you get to the second stage of your life where you grow. You grow your career, you go to life, you have babies. You start company, you start business, and you get to the top part of your life. The top part of your life. The three phase. Yeah, it's the third step. The top step is when you give it all away. I'm him. When all of those things that you've, both the mistakes 
and the success of your life, you become a gift to humanity. So for me, coming to the U.S., I just wanted to create success. I just wanted to build a life. I just want to build a business. I just want to make money. I just want to have money. And we did. We started a mortgage company in the Bay Area. We made multi-million dollars and the market crashed and we lost it all. And that helped me to just redefine what I'm here. What is it that I'm really here to do? Right, because we sometimes put so much emphasis on the things yes. and the accomplishments and the accolades. Yes. And then something has to happen. That the universe has a powerful way of bringing us back to back to the core, back to the essence, back to what really matters to us. You know, the thing that I believe can really unlock abundance in life is the ability to tap into our creative self. You cannot be depressed and be creative. You cannot be worried and be creative. You cannot try to hustle for life and be creative. Now, creativity is our authentic self. It's who we're called to be. It's who we're born to be. You see a little child. They just want to explore. They just want to create. But when life comes to us, we forget our authentic self. And then we now go into all the things. We forget who we are. Mm -hmm. So when we go back, and this is what happened to me. When the market crashed and we lost everything, I went back into who am I called to be? Went back to San Francisco Cheater Film School, and then I started my journey into creating film. And that creativity, once it, when it was unlocked, it also unlocked abundance. When abundance was, was, was unlocked, I stepped into a place of flow. It's almost as if I can feel, <laughs> because there's a centeredness that you step into when you're operating from that space. But the biggest difference maker is when I get into the dark stage of my life. Where you're in now. Yeah, where I am now. Oh, I'm good. And the understanding that you can make all the money in the world, you can get all the accolades, but if you're not impacting others, if you're not given, you are just nothing. You have things. I mean, you and I have talked about this before. You have a lot of things. You could have everything. I went through this. I lived in Ireland at very... I would say, you know, a little bit of a silver spoon in my mouth growing up, but I didn't feel like I had everything because I didn't have the most important thing, which was a relationship, very close-knit family. I didn't have extended family. So I felt like I had a lot of things, but I didn't feel like I had the most important things. And sometimes we feel like we have everything, but we don't really have anything at all. Yeah, I see that in you all the time. I mean, you, you just constantly giving. You just... You don't have to go to this show. It's free. Anybody can watch it for free. But feeling like, no, I want to do more. I want to, I want to do, get, get this book of record and get everybody platform. You just want to do so much for humanity. And it's not from a place of lack. It's from a place of, look, I have more than enough. Yeah. I could retire now and be good. But I wanted to impact others. So you build a platform for, for people to come to. That's where you really find light. And a lot of times you realize that when you have all of this money, you have all of these awards, and it's like a glass house. You can walk in there and you feel completely empty. Mm -hmm. And this happened to one of my friends, actually. So his dream was to be an NFL player. Right. He wanted to be so bad. And he, if I mention his thing, most people will know him. And he got there and he had his best contract. The first thing he did was he bought a beach house. Right. Glass. And he walked into this house. And he's, he's still there, and all he felt was complete emptiness. And he goes, mm -hmm. but, you know, it takes getting there, though. It does. It does. I was in India recently, and I went to the Golden Palace. It was really beautiful. They had this amazing platform uh, that you could sit up and meditate and see the palace. But they also had a, f a golden sort of railed fence so that people didn't fall into the lake because the palace is surrounded by water. So I was, I was sitting there meditating. I was looking out at the palace, and I noticed that the fence was made of gold. I thought, wow, you can still be in a jail even though it's made of gold. <laughs> wow. Right? And so these golden bars were still made of gold, but they were still bars. They were still holding people back. Yeah. And so that same thing, that glass house, that accolade, which is a really interesting conversation because some people watching will be like, I don't have the success that you two have or other people on the show. But there's a power in impact that doesn't require success or potentially um, monetary success. Oh, absolutely. You know, the truth of the matter is the accolades of men and rege rejection of men, they are the same thing. Don't fall for it. Mm -hmm. So either you keep being given accolades, if it gives you, make your head get so big, or if it's rejection, what happens if those 
absolutely to send people that are pointing hands to him and say, hey, you know that, what if they taught against you? So the accolades of men and rejection of men, they are the same thing. You just don't fall for it. And it doesn't really matter where you are in life. It doesn't matter what you are doing right now. The moment you're able to tap into the abundance that you are mm-hmm. or the creative power that you carry, you are successful. So I own a marketing company. And it's a lot easier for us to go after the reach, the one million reach. But you know what I tell people? Start go. If you wanted to find the most incredible conversion, look for the individuals that have 200 followers, only 500 followers, a thousand followers. You know the different? They are close name. Right. They're community. They're community. Community. And when you find that community of people, their influence is even greater. Because those other ones, they know that, oh, he's trying to sell me something. So it doesn't matter where any of our viewers are in their life, in their level of success. What am I talking about? I'm an African dude that came to the U.S. with $150 in my pocket. It's not like I I have to head or, you know, anybody can attain success. But the best place to start is to know that I want to impact humanity. The best place to start is to know that I want to impact humanity. I'm not doing this for the money. I'm not doing this for free. I'm not doing it so that I can, I mean, all, all those things we come anyway. Right. But when you go straight into impacting others, you can accelerate your growth. And people can do it on every level, mini, macro, all. I mean, I tell people all the time, you can help at your local uh, kindergarten. You can be with your local softball team. You can, you know, do something at your old folks home. You can do something at, uh, you know, the SPCA and help with animals. Impact is actually micro. There's a small movements that make the ripple effect. A lot of people feel like they have to impact humanity in a big way. I realize you know, that one little thing that can actually create this big sweep. And it's actually the little things that count the most. So you, think- you know, the ability to go to the local community, to your local church, your local mosque, to the local chapel, and just say that I want to contribute. Right, and the things that are free. Yes. Right? Yeah. And it doesn't cost you. You know, you know what I tell people, if you want to get out of depression, if you want to get out of worry, step into gratitude and step into giving. Mm-hmm. Because when you get into gratitude, you're grateful. Then you even have breath. When you step into giving, you're able to accelerate impact on people faster than anything. Well, you know what's happening when you do that? You receive. Right. They just come back to you. They accelerate. They grow. Business and boom. It's, I think that's exactly what I realized when I went into that lower point of life. And the ability to just step out and just say, you know what? How can I? Not what's wrong with me? How can I impact all of them? You know, we have seven principles of igniting humanity. The last one, Trent, yes, yeah, principle number seven is, is two parts. It says give first, which is, I think, so powerful because... It says, give first and offer all you can is the full principle. Wow. But it's, wait, wait, wait. Can you say that one? Yeah, yeah. Give first and offer all you can. And we, I believe, because I created the seven principles of humanity, (laughs) that principle number seven that says, give first and offer all you can has a lot, a lot of pieces to unpack when you really give first, because you, when you offer and you give, be like, how can I help you? How can I serve? How can I support you? How can I make sure it's better for you? When you give first and then you offer all you can, like, I may not have a lot, but I'm going to offer all I can to support you. You and I both know that that creates a magnitude, like a tsunami of benefits that just keep Sorry. growing. You have no idea what that statement did to me. So it ignited you. Has that so much? <laughs> it's an ignite moment. Yeah. Okay, just check this out. Before you go to market, you have to understand what your offer is. And I always say to people that your offer is for your price. It's two different things. True. So your offer is a transformation that you're providing for the people you're called to serve. So what you said, give first and offer all you can, it changed the perspective because what you're doing is you're positioning a transformation, all that you are, and you are offering it into a group of people that connects with you. So when it comes, the conversion, if you want to use it, it's really simple. If you want to make a lot of money, if you wanted to accelerate your growth, if you wanted to become all that you're called to be, create incredible offer, all you can, right? and find a group of people that are willing to plan for it. Yeah, and you give it first. Yeah, yeah you give it first. And so, who is that? 
Oh, fantastic. I love it. Let me blow your mind more. more. Okay. <laughs> That's me. I've been gathering together. <laughs> okay. So principle number one is actually instill in everyone what's possible. Talk about that a little bit because possibilities for me, if you can, if we can actually stir the minds of people to understand that every single person should be living in the center of what's possible. Can you imagine, I want you to have what's possible. You want me to have what's possible. I want you to create what's possible. Can you imagine the influx of gain and wealth and, and growth that we would have as human beings on a global scale if we were all living within what is possible? So to foster what's possible. It's incredible. So you use the word understand what's possible. So the key word there is number one, what is understanding? Okay. Understanding is your definition of what you want or what you realize in a given equation. <laughs> when you say that, the thing that I'm thinking about is see, possibility is basically understanding what is possible for that, mm -hmm. not what is possible for me. Right. Now, but how I, can I facilitate? Exactly. So, and it comes from connection. So I wanted to give you what is possible. And what is possible is me understanding what is possible. What is it that you want right. possible? Not what I want. It's almost the same as love because I, I always tell to people that if you really wanted to love people, it's not you bringing your awesomeness and giving it to them. It's finding out what is it that they love mm -hmm. and going, forgetting what, what you want to provide and giving it to them. So the same to the possibility. Mm -hmm. So you have a group of people that you're called to serve and you're passionate about serving them. You're passionate about connecting with them and you want to know what is possible for them. You want to understand what is possible for them and create an offer and give it to them. Mm -hmm. It's a win, win, win situation. Right. It's a beautiful principle because parents make things possible for their kids all the time. Right. Right. Spouses want to make things possible for their partners. We as business owners want to make things possible for our team, our employees. And in truth, like I feel like as we rise up in our awareness as a humanity and as a collective, we actually want our fellow men to achieve. We want them to succeed because Life is not a teeter totter. Like I don't have to, you don't have to yeah. answer me to gain, yeah. right? There's this more, more now than ever. There's this huge equation of the fact that if we all rise, what does that say? When the boat, when the water rises, all the boats lift. I have no idea. It's a cool saying. Imagine like all the boats are in the yeah. channel mm -hmm. and when the water rises, all the boats rise instead of just one boat making it through the better, which is I'm kind of butchering it a little bit, but it's my vision of it, that we all rise. No, it's incredible. So the people that influence the world, if you look at the people that influence the world, what it is, is it, it's a really simple code. Find a solution, look for a problem. Mm -hmm. What is the problem? Look, so look, you can go right now into your community and say, what is the problem? Correct. Find a solution. If you don't understand the solution, connect with others that do. Come up with a crush it solution that you put time and energy into and offer it like crazy. And that's what you're saying. So now you're not doing it for you. You provided a solution for all the bones, for all the ship to rise. Mm -hmm. And then you educate the market, you dominate the market, and you become oh. a superhero and have a lot for it. <laughs> so, but when we go from a place of, I want this, right. I want to rule over, how to see, mm -hmm. and you forget that really you call to impact. Love that. All the sound that. Do you think there's a lot of people sitting at hall and I feel this way. Every single person I know, if you ask them, they have something that is an angst for them that they actually have a solution to. And they feel like it's true. Everybody, if you just sit down, you could talk to her with you. I don't like it when this happens or I was thinking about this. But the truth is, if you just dig a little bit deeper, most people have a really good idea. I know as well. <laughs> And so I want to dip into that because I feel like everybody has a solution. And I know that you love solutions. You love innovation. You love bringing people. You love, love bringing things to market. How could you influence somebody who's sitting at home thinking, I'm always complaining about this and I have a solution. What's my next steps? My life message. Okay. Which is incredible. So I believe strongly that every experience of our life is designed for the next space of our assignment. No, it's it. Say it again. Every experience of our life is designed for the next phase of your assignment. Mm -hmm. And there's no exemption. The good, the bad, the ugly, the success, the failure of our life is actually designed for your life to become a curriculum 
that will position you as an authority in that field. You know why? We only have authority over two things, the things we love and the things we overcame. So if you come from a place of abuse, you come from a place of divorce, you come from a place of failure, you understand how to take those elements of your life instead of it becoming a bragging right and a water cooler conversation and you build it, it become passionate. Because you already have authority over it. Because he happened to you. It's your story. It's the beauty. It's my, it's my passion. It's my passion. It's my passion. I'm just here. You're describing an ignite moment where people have something that happens to them and instead of becoming the victim, they become the victor. Yes. The mess of the life that turns into message. And then you become an authority right. in that. You take those same historians and you offer it to others. Because, just think about this. 7.5 billion people on the planet. It's absolutely impossible for one person to influence them. I don't care who you are. They cannot have influence over 7.5 billion. Mm-hmm. You know what that means? Every single one of us can influence a thousand. Right. We can influence hundred thousand. Right. We can influence millions. We can impact so much. But all that it takes is you going back into what I call your life assets. Mm-hmm. And when your life assets, you take it down. And you find all the people that will hear that story and they will find great fruit. Absolutely. Because when you hear someone else's story, something really magical happens. The heart opens up, the soul awakens, the compassion, the empathy, all these things are really unfolding that we can actually stop. It's like a chemical reaction in our body. We can't stop that's, ourselves. That's humanity. Yeah. Because we are, this, we are one big giant ecosystem. Mm-hmm. We're all connected. So... When you are telling me a story, my mind is blown. I'm just like, oh my gosh, yeah, that happened to me. When we relate, we connect, and then you give me the solution. It's, what did you do? How can you stop that? Right. Right. And then I want to learn from it. I want to grow from it. And I pass it on to others. And then it just becomes this viral ripple effect. It goes from Africa to India to China and come back to Europe. It's incredible when we take the experience of our life and you turn it to a way to impact humanity. Yeah. I always say that when you take your ignite moment and you share the blessings and the lessons from it, you give people the golden those golden nuggets. Rest my doubt. So yeah, exactly. And it's kind of like that candle that lights another candle. Yeah, it's yes. another candle lights another candle. You know, we're really igniting the world, are we? We are. That's who we're called to be. For one person at a time. One person. There's a lot of people watching this show that think, I can't do it. It's not possible for me. Whatever hardship has overcome them, whatever they've been beat down with in their story, they feel like it's not possible for them. Can you tell the audience members that they can do it? It's possible. Listen, <laughs> they can do it. <laughs> but, but in all seriously, you know, the things that stop us from becoming all that we're called to be. Can we do the research? Because from marketing, we have to understand what's up in people from Friday. And it boils down to four things. Okay. okay. The first thing is fear. So either you afraid of the unknown, you're fe- afraid of failure, you're afraid of success, you're afraid of being called an imposter, you don't know, you just have that fear. The second is you have no knowledge, you don't know what it takes for you to do it. And number three is you have no community that is standing for you, you don't have humanity around, all the humans that support you, that guide you, that are like-minded. And the fourth is you don't have a mentor that can help you. And here's the best, and we've done this over and over and over again. If you find a community to plug into, if you overcome fear, if you find a curriculum or a guide, and you find a mentor, you can do it. So if I'm telling you, oh, you can do it, I'm just inspiring, you know, being another inspirational speaker, they don't last. But when you look for these four items and you become absolutely intentional he said i'm going to spend the best four weeks to find a community to find a mentor that i can trust i'm going to partner with it you can do it <laughs> thank you so much i love those four things i'm remembering them right now because they actually are going to make a big impact in my life and when you impact me and i can go impact someone else that is going to impact humanity thank you so much All right, folks, well, as you know, this is an amazing show because I love those four things. Go out and overcome your fears. Decide that you can achieve what it is you desire. 
And then look for a community that can support you. Of course, you could be a part of the Ignite community. You can go to our Facebook page and be part of what we're up to, uh, what we're up to. And of course, you can see what I Benjamin is doing also and by looking at the description on our page and we'll share a little bit more about how to connect with him. Also, you want to gain knowledge and know what it is is possible for you. And as we said, give first and give often. Those kinds of things create a new awareness in your life that can create something more for those people around you. And then you want to get a mentor. So surround yourself with people who are going to support you. People who you see are dying humanity. People that you witness doing something great because as you st saddle up beside them, see what they're doing and check out their mentorship programs, you too could become a mentor in everyone's lives. Just the little things you do make a big impact on humanity. Well, we love having you on the show. And if you've got an Ignite moment you want to share, reach out to us at ignitehumanity.life backslash share. Tell us your story. Just fill out our type form and tell us what you're up to and what you're doing to Ignite Humanity. And we could have you on the show. And even if you have a friend or a family member that you know is doing something to Ignite Humanity, let us know and we'll reach out to them. Of course, if you want to watch this show again or any of the shows that we are doing, please go to ignitehumanity.life backslash watch and all of our episodes are available to you because we want to give you the tools and the tips that you need to ignite humanity in your life. And last but not least, if you want to support children in need, we are building schools around the globe. So go to ignitehumanity.life backslash donate and you could be a part of our school build. Just $1 buys a brick and any donation goes towards building bricks in our schools to ignite the lives of others. Well, we love having you on the show. It's so great to be here. Just remember our two principles we talked about today. You can go out and give first and give all you can. And of course, you can evoke and forge through possibilities in your life. And that is going to make humanity a great place to be. Big hugs and kisses to you guys. See you tomorrow. Now, more than ever, we need to come together to connect with one another. We need to feel the truth in who we are and let go of everything that's happened in the past. We need to empower every person on the planet and awaken hearts, enliven souls, come together, laugh, play, Rejoice, connect, create, and love. It's time to ignite humanity. We want you to be a part of something that will impact the future for everyone. We want you to tell your story, share your ignite moment, show people who you truly are. Be a part of igniting humanity and making a difference in the world and all of our futures.